So have we got a kind of a male vocal, something a bit more? Um... I have a really cringy cro a crooner vocal from a sort of big band. Let's go for that. When the shark bites with his teeth, dear, scarlet billows start to spread. Fancy gloves, though, where's Mac Heath, dear? So there's not a trace of red Oh, the sidewalk I'm glad he changed key. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it's, a good, it's a good quality vocal, it's a great sound. Let's hear the, hear the processed one. When the shark bites with his teeth, dear Scarlet billows start to spread Fancy gloves, though, where's Mac Heath, dear? So there's not a trace of red. Again, instantly, it's more interesting. Yeah. It's got more, more body, more top end, more air, all those phrases that we use, that, you know, that we spend a fortune on creating in plugins sometimes. It's just... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I always think of it as almost like changing the mic on that particular one. You know, I think it was potentially a quite a neutral condenser microphone. Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember if it was a four and four or a, something along those lines, but quite, you know, quite sort of unhyped mic. And engaging HMX and I, and it, it actually makes it more like a. I wouldn't say it's the same as, but like the kind of slight grit and air you'd find on an old an old German tube mic. I'm not saying it's the same, but mm -hmm. it, it certainly pushes it towards that direction, which on a simple knob, you know turn on and off is a really nice weapon to, to have. So what, what else have we got in there? Um, so I'd probably show going over the top really with some um, electronic drums. So we've got some um, 808 drums, which we're effectively using as a, a two track and then running that through these to sort of show how far you could push the distortion. Because although they're really, the, the nice thing about them as circuit blocks um, is that if you don't go over their clipping point, effectively they're very, very subtle saturation and tonal, tonal enhancement tools. But if you deliberately overdrive into them and really push them far with a lot of amplitude into the, the sort of MOSFETs or the, the gain stages, then they sort of crumble effectively. And the transformer in particular just crumbles completely and it becomes a, almost like a fuzz pedal. So probably best to show. So here's the before. Here's the before. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's that's filth in a in a process. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and it, it stays tight as well. So the kick drum, depending on how how you hit the low end into the transformer, um, you can actually shape the sort of envelope of your kick drum. So it can be really long, like a, or you get a tight sort of brap type of distortion. Mm. So you can really voice voice that. And what we played there was the flat, then a, a subtle sort of knock, which just puts a bit of hair on the kick drum, and then one that's fully driven into the transformer. A proper kind of um, almost beatboxes. <laughs> yeah, it of... does that. And you know, it, that's a great texture to do and then run it up in parallel in the mix, you know, or um, just use it as a breakdown. It's quite nice, isn't it? Of the, you know, chorus, and then maybe just like a bar or two drop after the chorus before you go into the verse. Things just go all filtered and then your drums sort of crunch up before they go back to full range or something. You know, you don't have to use it for the whole song, but it can just be really great for a section.
So let's try the HMX9 on a whole mix. So okay. we're treating it more as a mastering process now, as much uh -huh. as we would do like a, a channel or an insert effect. Yeah, we've got it on this big band recording actually. So this is the flat one. That's the flat and the process. Chalk and cheese. Yeah. I mean, the, again, the first thing I always listen to on a track is the drums. The, the, the ride cymbals got much more presence, much more sort of top end brightness to it. Yeah. The kick drums now, got, or the bass drum as it would be in this, this sort of style, yeah. has got much more roundness and warmth to it. The whole track's just gone, just got some life to it. It's got some. Yeah, it's sort of got depth, I think. And, and actually, the, the flat version sounds like. I've always described it as the the drummer is like maybe in rehearsal. He's a bit bored. Yeah, well, not so much, but just in rehearsal. Yeah, like uh, because it's Steve, the guy who's my boss, playing the drums. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's it's sort of um, he's he's yeah, like a rehearsal pass in a way. Mm. And then when you engage Iron particularly with the transformer, it and it just sort of brings the stick attacks up, and like you've mm. noticed it immediately, the ride cymbal just has Jumps more rhythm. Yeah. And suddenly the drums command the band, you know, and in that sense now you've got a, a band that is following its leader in a way, in, in terms of its rhythm, uh, with it, it off. It almost makes the band sound better, in a yeah, weird sort it's a, of way. But it's a feel, isn't it? It's, yeah. like, it's like everyone's sort of just sat a little bit further up on their stools, and everyone's just dug in a little bit harder on, the, on whatever the instrument they're playing, and the drummer's sort of sat there really guiding them with yeah. that ride, and turn it off, and they've all sort of just gone, they've just come back off the coffee break and they're just, yeah. you know, their take's not Caffeine quite there yet. Caffeine hasn't kicked in yet. Yeah, you know, they're just, ugh. So um, that's really the benefit of them. You know, they can be tonal shaping tools. You can look at them as um, just out and out distortion and saturation, a basic EQ, a depth perception, a sort of spatial shift. Very, very subtle, but subtle things are what separates the, you know, great mix from the okay it's, mix. It's a really, really powerful, wide-ranging tool. And there's another six great sounding mic breeze in there. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're almost effectively a, a sort of like um, bonus features. Mm. So yeah, I remember when we first got the, the press release and the, and the info on, on the um, yeah. 800, and we had to call the office to make sure we got the price right, because I couldn't believe it, that you were gonna get eight channels of audio mic pre and all the, the loveliness of HMX and Iron for that sort of price. And I'm not going to start quoting prices because, quite frankly, my memory always fails me at this point. Yeah. But it's a seriously good value piece of kit. It's under 100 a channel by a long way. Yeah. yeah. It's an amazing piece of kit, and you can't have mine back. Good. <laughs> we want you to keep it and keep using it, yeah. It's, it's the, probably the highest value product we've, one of the highest value products we've, we've put out, actually. I mean, all of our products now are incredibly good value. In fact, even the consoles probably were one of the best value medium format to large format consoles there. But... We really pushed the boat out with 800 to get the price where it is, mm. yeah. So, Tom, thanks ever so much. No worries, it's been, it's a, been a, pleasure. a pleasure. Thanks, mate, yeah. Um, there'll be more stuff coming from the guys at Audient. We've got a whole a year's worth of stuff that we've got planned. Um, I think this was going to be one video that's probably turned its way into two or three or probably even more than that. So, um, for now, I've been James from Pro Tools Expert. We'll see you again soon for some more gear talk.